Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. I have here a Renault e-Space to have a look at. So the first thing you to note on these cars is the OBD port is hidden under here. So if you're looking for it, that's where it is. We've got it connected up now with the launch X431 Euro. Okay, now we're going to do a scan of the entire vehicle and see what's going on. Are we scanning? What's going on? Okay, so just start that again. I had the ignition off, which may have confused the diagnostic system. There you go. So that's the first job of the day. We've got the customer over there waiting. We're just going to see if we can figure out what's going on with these coming from four hours away or something like that. Okay, while well, that's going on, I'll have a quick chat about what's going on. Is um, he's had the DPF cleaned but within a short amount of time it comes back and yeah, basically he said he's had the battery tested he knows it needs a new battery but it hasn't been replaced but he just needs to find out why he's DPF blocking and basically if I can do a clean on it as well so we're going to see if we can do that for him it's a little bit slower than your normal car to um, scan this one taking a fair bit of time usually just a lot quicker this machine we have multiplex problems with the injection multiplex information missing. Right, we've got all of these faults everywhere. I'm going to ignore these because we know it's got a bad battery. And he said he's had it, had the battery off and had it on charge. But right, these are the faults we need to resolve here, which is number of regenerations, failures has exceeded, boost pressure, circuit incoherence, particle filter blocked, maximum limit. Engine deacceleration too high. That's not a fault I've seen before. So, um, first thing I'm going to do is look at the boost. So it's got a block DPF, all right. But there's no point looking at that until we sort out the boost pressure. That's going to be the cause of why it's failing regen. So if it's not got enough boost, so let's check what we have here for boost. Um, manifold pressures. We're just looking for. Don't have manifold pressure, boost pressure, map, boost uh, atmospheric pressure, just so we can show you a reference of what it should be basically. Atmospheric pressure, boost pressure, we'll have a look at the upstream pressure as well because it's a Renault. Right, let's have a look at all the rows. Give it a rev up and down. Yeah, we can see we have the sensors working, so it doesn't look like there's a problem with that. So if I come over here and just switch all of those to millibars, I'm looking for the key, but yeah, it's a button start. Turn the ignition on. So yeah, we have boost pressure around about a thousand, same as the um, atmospheric pressure, 999 basically that would be. Um, upstream pressure of the turbine sensor looks a little bit lower but I'm not going to be concerned with that right now uh, so we know the sensors are working so that's the first thing that we can um, eliminate now I'm going to check for boost leaks ok we've got this launch UK smoke 2 we're going to get this connected ok so we're going to set this up to produce smoke this is quite a difficult car to access the pipes are in there so I've managed to sort of have a little bit of a look around and I can use this so if I connect that in here see we're producing smoke so if we've got a leak somewhere that will show us from here so just turn the torch on there but you can see there's a slight bit of a leak down here but watch if I move the pipe so if I pull this give it a wiggle we've got loads of smoke if you let go, give it a wiggle. We've got smoke. Okay, so I'm going to get this pipe off and have a look at it. So you can see basically when you move it down, it smokes, move it up, it doesn't. Okay, so pipe off, you can see here, 
that's where we have the crack in the pipe there. As you squeeze it, you can see it opens up a big hole there. So we can't get hold of this pipe. This is a Renault only pipe, as you would imagine. You can't just grab it from anywhere. Um, the customers come from four hours away, so I'm not gonna have them sitting there for two, three days while I try to locate that pipe. What I'm gonna do is just bodge it up for now, maybe glue it together. Um, and he can, he's in actually ordering it while I'm speaking now on the phone. So he's on the phone to the Renault dealer there. And he's going to get that ordered and he can change it once he's home. So we just use this glue and uh, an activator basically to just get that sealed up temporarily just until he drives home. So what I'm going to do is clean the DPF, but we don't want this affecting the DPF on his way home. So get that sealed up good enough to drive home then tomorrow get this replaced. Now, of course, I would like to change that here now before I do the DPF, but that's it's not really possible. He's come from four hours away, um, and I can't get hold of this pipe. As you know, as you can see, this is sort of a, a genuine pipe that you can only get from Renault. So the only way to do this is to just temporarily fix it, um, clean his DPF, and then I've explained to the customer, you don't want to keep driving it while this is on, because if that glue comes off, and you do 100 miles or more, 200 miles, then your DPF will block again and you'd be wasting your money basically. So fix the pipe um, and then your issue will not come back. So next question here from the customer was, do you think having this new EGR valve fitted, this is what was done before when it had the DPF done, um, EGR fitted, has the EGR fitting that EGR, removing all of this, do you think that was damaged while that was done? Yes and no. So yeah, it probably has agitated it a bit if you've pulled it to get this off, but it's an old pipe, they are brittle, um, so you can't just start chucking blame on people. It needs to be replaced, that's it. Now a nice little pressure test again, with the smoke running. Can you see it? We've got a nice sealed up pipe. Now if we disconnect that, you can see we're getting smoke in, so she's sealed for now. Obviously that is just glue, it's not going to last forever. So now just putting all of this back together and then we can get underneath the, the car. Here's the DPF underneath the car. We've got it connected to the pipe here and disconnected the pressure sensor holes here and just connected up my own holes that goes to the gun. Okay, so this is the cleaning fluid I'm using. That's the Launch UK gun as well to match, even though you can't read it. So that's connected to the compressor at eight or nine bar. I get asked that question a lot, so that's the answer to that. Just gonna spray some of this fluid in with the engine off. Not too much. So now, back in the car, I'm gonna start it up. So I don't wanna fill the DPF completely just because it sits kind of close to the turbo. Now we'll put the rest of it in with the engine running, just so it doesn't travel backwards to where the turbo is. We're just going to hold the trigger now until all of that's gone. Now we can come back under, disconnect this holes that I put on. You can hear there's a lot of pressure in there. Connect back up the original holes and we just get this clip now locked in. Okay so this is where we are 24 25 millibars of pressure this is after the fluid's been in. Looks like we're locked out at 35 grams so that must be the maximum because if we hold up the revs it doesn't look like it moves. And what we want to see is these numbers dropping down. Now Reynolds are usually good by if you reset the fault codes it will get rid of all these but no this one is not getting rid of so unfortunately the only way to reset that is going to be reset the DPF parameters, which is telling that it's got a new DPF. Um, if we can find it, it, we don't want to do regeneration, but we're just going to go into this menu to see is it here. No, we don't want to do that. So let's just clear the fault codes for now and then we'll read the DPF pressure. D-I-F-F, that one, and the soot. So we'll also keep an eye on that 
temperature of the DPF there as well so you see it's come down to sort of 13 now. So now we just take it on a road test. Okay we've still got that check injection warning on the dash and it's this is the only fault that we've got here um, but I can't find the option to reset the DPF on here so I might have to maybe try a different scan tool. So sometimes you do need a couple of different tools sometimes there will be something missing from one tool or another on, on a certain car so we're just going to try this one uh, what's it? it doesn't really tell me what this is particle filter with oh you can change it to wood or black we don't want to do that we don't want to do a regeneration we just want to tell her it's got an adpf okay the RTL wasn't much use so we're going to try this one x tool XT80W Just running through a scan now with this tool as well uh, Back on the launch, I think I'm going to go into this one, reinitialization Yeah, we've got it there So all of that, I've tried three different tools And uh, I was still in, looking in the wrong place Alright, that's done Now Because what's happening there is we can't clear the fault code This one so we should be able to clear that now. No. Nope. So you see on the autel here we've got a reading of 90 grams of soda in the DPF, which is different. Um, but we need to get that reset down, otherwise the fault will not clear. Okay, so I've just reset it again. I'm going to leave the ignition off for a few minutes. Okay, so I've been over an hour trying to get this fault code to reset, DF311. Uh, we tried three different tools, didn't reset. Um, I then had to force a region just to try that, that didn't work. Um, we turned the ignition off for 10 minutes, turned it back on. I then tried to clear it with the um, launch, it didn't work. I then tried the autel the second time and then it did work. So fault code is now cleared. Uh, we'll just confirm it there just by checking the fault code, make sure that it has cleared. Now data stream for the DPF, um, differential pressure. We haven't even checked the soot now again after clearing the fault code, but I've literally just cleared it. But we'll check for the soot and the differential pressure. So the soot has been reset to zero and we have three millibars of pressure on the DPF. And the good news is the boost hose is holding up with the glue for now. So that's it. Renault is pass. It's all sorted, thankfully. See you on the next video.